In other words, what you want to do is come up for an expression for how kappa is related to Q, the charge of the rod. So you do double kappa x, and since x was absolute value of x, right, I just go from 0 to double 2 and double it. And that gives me the 2 kappa x squared over 2, 0 to L over 2. And the 2 and the 2 cancels. And kappa L squared over 4. So that tells me whatever the constant kappa is, it's related to the big Q of the rod, the charge Q of the rod, as 4 times the Q divided by L squared. OK, now put that in here. Zero to L over two, kappa, kappa x squared over two, x L squared over four. So if I multiply, this is four times two, that's going to be eight k q d times b q divided by L squared. I think it'll take me a while, but I wanted to, something wanted me to show you that if I find the limit of this as d goes to infinity, what should it give me? What, should, what did the other one give me as limit d goes to infinity? kq over d squared, kq, uh, little q, big q over d squared, right? Try to see if you could do that on your own. Find the limit of this as d goes to infinity. It'll take me, we kind of will run out of time. Uh, if you find the limit of that as d goes to infinity, it should be the same behavior as a point charge again. Whether or not the rod was uniform charge or non-uniform charge. When you go away from the rod, who cares if the charge is uniform, non-uniform? It should still look like a point charge. OK? So what you're going to have to do is expand this out, binomial expansion, eliminate all the higher powers of the d, Keep only one power of d, combine it with that, and then you'll be able to show that it has the same behavior, kq little q over d squared. OK? OK, but for now, let's do this. Put in all the numbers and see if this is less than 0 0.019. Right? That was our prediction, that it was going to be less than 0 0.019. So f total. Little q was, uh, I forgot now, what was the little q? And then that one was 6 times 10 to the minus 6. And then the distance d was the 0.6, right? The length was 1 meter, so that one squared is just 1. And then over here, So do all of that. It's a longer calculation. But you should get a number less than 0 0.019. Let's see. I'll do it along with you here.
0.30 I got wait I get I get 0.300, is that right? But the other one was what? No, something is wrong. One of them is wrong. You see, therefore, one of them has got to be wrong, you know, because our logic can't be wrong. If the charge is distributed more on the outside where they're farther out and they're canceling each other, the uniform rod should be more than that. So we got to check. It's either an integration mistake or a calculation mistake. It can't be the non-uniform rod would be uh, where the charge was more on the outside would be greater. Uh, let's see, the other one was This is the uniform rod. I'm not getting 0 0.019. This one? So you see, this is 1. So let's do 0 0.25 plus 0 0.6 squared, right? To the power 0.5 times d, which is 0 0.6, and then invert it times 9 times the charge was uh, 3 times 6, 0 0.345. Mm, yes. Ah, it's a little larger. See, that's what I want you to do on the test. I want passion. 0 0.300, 0 0.345. Yeah, first one was wrong. Okay, it was just the mainly calculational error. Okay, so the uniform rod is a slightly larger than a non-uniform rod where the charge density is more on the outside. Perfect.